lady that you let stay in your house because you're not six yet. The this big blob in her family know. Nobody never gets my team. Whoever that's fucking where the fucking niggas and fuck that against you too. If you take it better, I'm taking it further. There's something you don't want to do. We don't want to hear you say nigga no more. Stop. We don't want to hear you say family no more. We don't want to hear you say Chateau no more. We don't want to hear you say friends no more. Bitch ain't a friend to nobody. You a certified nurse assistant who works with disabled patients and wipes ass. Woodrow McGrew Jr. went to Eastern Hills High School in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. This big blob was birthed from an even bigger blob named Carolyn Hall McGrew on October 3rd, 1984. So let's 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 let the dragging begin. I'm going to start by the first false accusation. Okay? First of all, I'm not even 36 yet. I've never denied that I was in my thirties, never deny anything about my age. The people who know my age, they know. But I ain't never told nobody I was thirty-seven years old, bitch. You tried to estimate your aunt. You're wrong. Wrong answer, meatball. Okay. As far as my living conditions, bitch, I live in my own place. I didn't need to go and recruit Bridget. You remember Bridget, the lady that you let stay in your house because you were trying to use her for health benefits from the state because you were on a fixed income? I don't have to lie about that because you did tell me that you were on a fixed income. And you did, and that's also in text message. You said that. Okay? I'm self-sufficient. My mother loves me. In fact, since we're talking about mothers, because I remember you said that I was doxxed, right? You you and I were both doxxed. I'm going to dive into that in a little, a little bit. But you and I were both doxxed. My face picture, along with my mother's picture, which was on my Instagram and Facebook, was doxxed. So which, which lie is it? Which lie is it? I don't have a mother or I have one. Because you're going around lying, talking about me and my mom are at odds. We're in, we're in a great space. Me and my mom love each other. My mom does not judge me for being gay, even though she is a spiritual woman. She does not judge me for being gay. She's never been on drugs. Never has she been on drugs. That's another fucking lie that you told. But your your father didn't even your father didn't even accept you being gay. And that's unfortunate for a lot of black gay men, right? Because and a lot of gay people in general, because a lot of people aren't accepting of their gay family members or gay children. Your father didn't like your monkey ass, and you didn't and you and your father had a strained relationship. Don't project your fucking lies on me. Not only are you oversized, but you're the ugliest duckling in your family. And I'm going to post, I'm going to post the pictures for proof. When you guys look at these pictures that I'm going to post, you tell me who the ugly duckling is and who's the one who was not loved and who was the one who didn't have the support and who had low self-esteem when they were a child. Because I'm going to get into it. And I'm going to also talk about how you shared with me that you fucked your dead cousin, the one that passed away. That's why I was so sensitive to you. That's why I was so sensitive to you that Eva doxed that picture, quote unquote, of you and your dead cousin. Because 
that's somebody you had sex with. And that's also the person you shared with me and told me caught, helped you find your sexuality. And I'm going to post that person's pictures. And I want you to, I want y'all to notice the vitriol reaction. Oh, bitch, I'm going to go there. You told me you fucked him and you told me you fucked another cousin. I'm about to post this shit to the Jumbo Trine. Oh, bitch, it's, it's war. Bitch, I'm coming for everything. Don't fucking lie on me. Bitch. Fuck out of here. T explain to poor chop. Explain to poor chop why you call her slow and remedial because of the Barty gang shit. Barty bang shit. You the one, you didn't even feel like she was handling funds appropriately. And I don't care if y'all talked it out or whatever, because, you know, people love to try to act like, oh, yeah, we talked about it. This was a this was a constant conversation. And I must admit, sometimes I feel like sometimes poor chop was just not always getting things. I did feel like that. But the way that he talked about this girl and he sits up on the phone and talks to these different individuals and they sit up in his space. This is why I'm saying you y'all don't understand why I distance myself from him. It's a reason. I noticed the stuff that he was doing to me, but I also took into account what he was doing to y'all stupid asses. You gullible son of a bitches. You deserve, you deserve everything he's doing to you. Everything. Everything he's doing to you. Now, I want to see how you're going to refute that. Ain't these the two cousins that you told me that you had sex with? The one on the left is the one you said you had a strong, strong tie with. And that's why when Eva posted, supposedly um, posted that picture, you felt some type of way. And let me just t talk about the whole doxing situation. I don't believe, I do not believe that Eva was alone in that. You know what I honestly, truly believe? I believe Woody has something to do with me being docs. I'm going to tell you why. Woody started adding me on Facebook, Instagram, you know, mo all kind of social media after, you know what I'm saying, we became acquainted with each other. And it was very fast. I, first of all, I don't even know how the fuck he found me on Facebook. Um, but maybe he just found me because he had, we swapped numbers, who knows, but either way, he found me, and then all of a sudden, like, this particular picture of me and my mom, who he says, I'm, I don't know, and we don't have a good relationship with, all of a sudden, it surfaces, this is the same picture that was on my Facebook and Instagram. And let me say this to y'all. I don't add a lot of people from Twitter to my social media. I always try to keep certain people separate. Like if I fuck with you on Twitter, that's one thing. But I don't let a lot of people into my private spaces like Instagram and Facebook for a specific reason. You know, because people tend to be messy, like how I'm going to be tonight <laughs> and that particular photo was not something that tame would have had access to you tried to put it off on tame you tried to put it off on tame and i went along with it and said you know what you know maybe it was mambo but nah i knew better it was you it was you you had everything to do with that and let's, since we're talking about, because um, it was another incident that I wanted to address. Because everybody keeps trying to ask me, like, why am I saying that this dude is a, a pedophile and stuff? Aside from 
certain little creepy ass weird statements that he's m made to me about not seeing age and age ain't nothing but a number and stuff like that even though he gets on the internet and tells everybody um you know like i i don't believe in you know associating with kids and you know i don't believe in attacking kids even though he threatened to hurt a kid we all heard that shit on spaces um even though he associates with kids in the chateau and uses them as a tool in his adult conflicts I'm going to post a picture and I'm going I'm I'm going to edit this because I really don't want the the child it's himself face to be in this but I want to post a, a text message and I don't know why he sent me this met this photo of this little boy in his bed I'm going to, you know, I'm just blacking out some stuff because I don't want, you know, I don't want certain things to be exposed like that. I want to keep this person's, I, I don't, you know, but I just, it's sickening. This is like so sickening to me. This is so sickening. Give me one second. Let me upload this and put this in the Jumbotron. So, as y'all know, you know what I'm saying, if y'all ever been a part of his spaces, he talked about how, um, he talked about how he invited this lady named Bridget over to his, his house. And um, he's she's supposedly a good friend of his who he bad mouthed and talked about at her lowest when she needed him most. Um, he let this lady in her house. She had three children. I believe it was a boy and two girls. And the the youngest one, his name, I'm not I'm gonna say his name is Roly. I'm going to say his name is Roly, but if you ever been a part of his spaces, you know he's mentioned this this young boy's name multiple times, right? And he was closest to the, I, I want to say he was about two or three years old. He was closest to this little boy out of all of them. And, you know, he, the little boy, you know, he's so young. Of course, young kids, they're going to be attached if you show them a lot of affection and love. But it was always very eerie because he was always by himself with this young boy. There would be times where the other two kids wouldn't be at home outside of not just being at school because they were a little bit older than the, this child that I'm talking about. But he was always in a secluded space with this young boy. Always. Always. And I want y'all to brace yourself because like I said, I do not want to expose the, the child, the child's face and certain parts, but for you as an adult, to send this to my phone and I was completely flabbergasted that he would even send something like this to me. Like, what was the purpose of this? Like, why did I need to see this naked child? Like, and I didn't even respond. So, Brace yourself. Hold on one second. I'm going to let people talk in just a moment. Give me one second. Let me upload this photo. Mr. Mr. Madea, we're going to get you up on out of here, baby. We're going to clear this on up. Cause you got me fucked up lying on me. 
and people people are right they are right it, it is it is appropriate to attach pedophilia to you give me one second y'all Mr. Skid Row McGluten. Yes, you got me fucked up. See, I don't need no motherfucking army. I got receipts. Fucking punk ass bitch. Let me show you what type of sick ass bitch this nigga is. I just uploaded it to the Jumbotron, y'all. Now, I have an iPhone. I have an iPhone, so... If y'all, anybody who has an iPhone and you are texting somebody with an Android, you know that your messages are going to show up in green. Now, now, you take a moment to process this. You tell me what 40-year-old man like I fucking said, what 40-year-old man is going to be letting a child lay up in their bed with them? The mother is not home. The father is nowhere to be around. You letting this child lay up in the bed with you all close. And you sending me pictures of this young boy. in his in his nudity i mean just disgusting disgusting this is the type of sick ass individual he is he has a backup page y'all too where he's in he is um into all kind of incest and taboo type stuff i'm gonna find his um his 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 freak page as he likes to call it his Twitter freak page. Give me just one second. And I'm about to post this. He might try to delete it or lock the page or it may be private now. Who knows? Into all kind of shit. Nasty. Incestual shit. Nope, that's not it. Let me find it. Hold on. There it is. And if you pay attention, I want y'all to pay attention to the screenshot so y'all know I'm not lying. If you look in the screenshot that I'm about to post, you'll see his alternate profiles in the background in the two circles to the right, in the upper right corner. If y'all remember when y'all was following him, he used to have that Michelle Obama um, profile page and that Mabel Madea Simmons profile uh, picture. He had both of those pictures on both of his profiles at one point in time. And when I upload them, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about.
Bitch, you got me fucked up. I ain't letting shit. I ain't sparing nothing. I ain't sparing nothing and nobody. Nobody. Sitting up here that hosted a whole five hour space. Talking about you ain't been engaging. Bitch, everybody see that you do that shit. You do this shit all the time. And the Chateau ain't going nowhere. That shit is done. It's dead, bitch. I told you, Alicia, I told you, I'm reading the comments. I'm going to send it to you, Trail. I'm going to send it to you, Trail. I'm looking at the comments. I'm just seeing it now. I'm about to send y'all this page, sending this to the Jumbotron. Bitch, ain't nobody got a fucking lie on you. You are a sick individual. And I don't have to scream into my phone to say it. I can get my point across just like this. With receipts. You always been a hater. You always been a backstabbing, manipulative, vile person. That's why I distanced myself from you. Why don't you tell Noah why you was up here talking about he was a mean girl and all this shit? So let me break this down for some of y'all who are in the dark about this whole situation. So basically, we used to hang out on Clubhouse, me, Tame, Woody, uh, Nia, you know, most of the people that poor chop, uh, Beck, Becca, uh, right swipe on Twitter. Um, who else was up in there? Trail. And, you know, Noah shared with us how he was attracted to this Hispanic man. He was a tra and trail. You could tell me if I'm lying. He was attracted to this Spanish man who he believed to be gay. He lives in the Bronx, New York. He talked about how this man um, was like, he felt like he would just give us like different instances about how like the man was like touching on him or talking to him in a certain way. And he had really created in his mind that this was going to be his boyfriend. And we would try to encourage him to like get the guy to, you know, speak to the guy. You know, like if you feel like he is doing all this stuff and sending you signals, why don't you just come out and just be like hey i like you and see what happens he obviously according to you he obviously has been making passes at you showing you affection touching on your neck and all this stuff why not just speak up and say something to the guy well his stance was well you know i'm just waiting on him to come out to me but you know you letting this man lay up in your crib for free Y'all done fought because he wanted some weed and he's an alcoholic, as you say. Y'all fighting. He ain't he you not even together. He leaving his baby mama house coming over there and you claim y'all ain't never fucked. Either either y'all have fucked and you're lying, or either you're making this up in your head. You're fantasizing. Nia called him out about it and called and basically told him he had a fantasy boyfriend. And he got mad. He was roasting Nia because Nia, you know what I'm saying, listens to old school music and all of this. And he was trying to make fun of her musical taste. So she, you know, roasted him back and said, you you living in a fantasy world. At least I'm not living in a fantasy world with this fantasy man. All of Noah's friends tell him. His friend Arnett. His um his friend, all his ballroom friends, his gay mother Milan family friends in New York tell him how he is fantasizing about this man who he wants to be gay so bad. And he's never coming out. He's just using you because he knows that you are attracted to him. So he's going to use you for what what it's worth. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I don't blame him. If you want to be a doormat, in the words of New York, if you want to be treated like a doormat, you deserve to be stepped on and walked on. 
that nigga is not fucking gay. Okay? You want you want to be with a trade so bad, Noah. You want to be with Trey so bad. You want to you want to imitate and duplicate what your mother dates, what your mother who you said you witnessed getting abused. You want to duplicate what she dates and what she puts up with so bad that you're willing to keep chasing these heteronormative relationships only to end up with nothing. As someone who claims to be a prominent figure on the ballroom scene, you should be elevating yourself. You should not be living in a one-bedroom studio apartment in New York where you can walk from your room to the to the kitchen and boil hot dogs and and you letting some stranger ass Puerto Rican or whatever the fuck his nationality is, Puerto Rican, Dominican, lay up in your crib, talk to you crazy, and fight you. Because he doesn't have patience. And if y'all go back and look at the screenshot of when I first posted about um, Noah, when I said that he um, likes to get abused, you can see where me and fucking, me and fucking Woody were talking about that. Because I was really concerned about Noah like really I was concerned I was like man like I seen too many times when gay dudes try to appeal to like straight men and they chase after them you know what I'm saying and then the straight man come over supposedly straight man or DM man comes over and murders the gay man in his apartment that's what I was I was afraid of because already he's already violent towards you He's already violent towards you. Like, why are you why are you accepting this? Why would you accept this? Like, it, it baffles me. I'm gonna post something else. Because he not only talked about he not only talked about um pork chop, but he also talked about Beck or Becca, right, right swap, whatever her name is, right swipe Tinder or Twitter, whatever the fuck her screen name is. Um, <clears throat> he talked about how slow she was. Um, I'm going to post some more pictures because here is Woodloaf, as I like to call him, Woodloaf. Here is Woodloaf talking about Noah unfollowing him one second see you gotta be careful how you play yourself because you know I know your deepest, darkest secrets, my love. You know I know. So you can lie on me, but I'm going to tell the truth about you. And I don't have to scream into my phone. I don't have to fucking recruit nobody to come up here to do it with me because I can. I mean, I can, but I'm, I'm going to do this by myself because, you know... I'm different. I don't I don't need you or anybody else to drag a bitch. If I want to drag a bitch, I'm going to do it on my terms when I feel like it, how I want to. And that's just going to be that Wait, Before I post that photo of the Noah situation, I want to post this picture here. Of. What Woody sent to me. From his little uh, profile that he screenshot, he screenshotted this right and sent this to me. And in the screenshot, it says, "Sons, please your dads and make sure to eat the nut that made you." Invite them. Another tweet says, "Invite them over for one and one six. Hide, hide the homies in the other room." 
Then when you're in in there, let the homie sneak out. So he sent me this, and this is um a photo that he sent me from his um his taboo freak page. I'm telling you, he's into some weird shit. Weird. And Trail, you could check my timeline for his um his backup page. I saw your comment. Bitch, I don't fucking have to lie. There's the receipt. I put that shit in the Jumbotron. Yes, Liddy Barty is being saved. And Trail says he remember that night. He remember the night. He remembers the night that I'm that I explained about when Noah was in the room telling us about his little fantasy straight crush. This man who's straight who abuses him, who he wants to come out the closet and wants to have a relationship so he's willing to accept all these delusional, abusive behavior tactics. Um, Woody also shared with me that Tiara is on the spectrum. Yeah, the one that likes to host therapy sessions over there in the chateau. I had no clue about this. Me and her don't talk like that. He talked about how she has autism. Um, you know, he's just a nasty, vile person. Nasty. He also sent me this message about Noah because he was talking about how fake Noah was because Noah linked up with um, there go Terry or something like that um, after he talked about how much of a phony ass bitch he was and how Terry never sees, never speaks to him when he's out in public and all this stuff. He sent me this screenshot of Noah hugged up with Terry. See, the difference between me and you is Mr. McGluten when I came to Twitter, I didn't come to Twitter to be popular. I came to Twitter to socialize, have fun. I don't give a fuck about being popular amongst Barty Gang. You do. You're an envious person and you'll you'll divide and conquer whoever just so you can remain on top or m remain visible to people. This is a screenshot of Woody sending me, I guess, the House of BG. Y'all remember that stuff that was going on on Clubhouse with Jazz and Tame and all this stuff? He sent me this screenshot. I guess he was supposed to inform me or let me know about what they had going on over there, which is why he was trying to create the Chateau. This was like July 30th of 2023. I'm going to post that. He has always been watching Tame. 
watching her like a hawk. He was obsessed with her. And Mark, while you over there running your mouth, I got something for you, too. I'm going to send you something, too. Well, I'm going to send it to the Jumbotron so you can read what, what uh, Mr. McGluten feels about you. Always obsessed. Always. He couldn't stand the fact. And I didn't even know what the hell was going on over there. Apparently he said that uh, Tame and Jazz and all them used to go over to WAC 100's, um, I guess WAC 100 hosts a club, a clubhouse room or something. And he said they used to go over there representing Barty Gang. And he felt like that they were misrepresenting Barty Gang and talking about how they just made Barty Gang look bad because it was a reflection of Cardi and all this stuff. Oh, brother, please know, please know. If you think I'm empty in the tank, there is more. I'm really taking it light on you. Because there's a whole lot more. Now, I want you to watch the visceral reaction to this. So Tay said, can you, um, Dizzy, who is Dizzy? Okay, let me unblock, okay, let me unblock her. Let me go unblock her. I don't know who that is. I probably, I'm going to be honest with you. I probably blocked some of y'all because y'all was over there in that space. But I just unblocked her, TK. <laughs> Chad said, <laughs> says it's nasty. That's why his face looks like he's wearing a mask. <laughs> y'all, I cannot make this shit up. Okay? Erica, love, you might be right. And I probably will take that particular one down, but it needs to go up for obvious reasons. I blocked out the, the face in certain parts because I really did not want to show the baby's face. But yeah. So... <laughs> Jackpot got me cracking up. So when I tell y'all, y'all need to leave the chateau. I'm, I'm. If, listen, when we tell y'all this, we not just saying it just because you know it's smoke in the air. It's a reason why we telling y'all this. It's a lot of evilness and vileness connected to that platform, and it was never. It was never about Cardi. It was only for the sole purpose of boosting Woodloaf's morale and boosting his ego. He don't give a fuck about nobody. He'll sell his own mama up the creek. And, oh, let me address that because it was said that my mama lives with me. My mama does not live with me. My mama is back home. She lives back home. And that's all I'm going to say. If you know where I'm from, you know where she at. She lives back home and she stays with a relative of mine. I have never been in a physical altercation with my mother ever. Ever. So that's a lie. 
That's a lie. I ain't never been in no physical altercation with my mom. I would never, no matter how much she has pissed me off. Hell, I didn't even, I never fought my dad. And my dad, me and my dad used to go at it real tough when I was young. I've never had a physical altercation with my father either. So stop your lies. Stop your lies. Now, have I had disagreements with other family members? Yeah. I mean, we're we all human beings. Like, who don't get it to with their family? But I but my family talks to me, they support me, they love me, they come visit. Just because I don't share every detail about what I do in my private life does not mean that you have an idea of who I am and how I live. I told you certain things and I withheld certain things for a reason because I already knew you was a snake. I knew how, how, how much of a snake you were. I was just waiting for you to show your head toward me. And honestly, you know what? I learned my lesson through all this because you know something? If you see somebody do if you see if you're friends with somebody right and that person is talking bad about another friend that they've been cool with a, the, for the longest or years before you ever knew them and they trashing them drag them through the mud they'll turn they'll end up doing it to you they'll end up doing it to you baby i don't have to lie about a motherfucking thing you want to talk about people's drug habits i've never been on drugs but you said the chat was on chat was on drugs or whatever but the thing about it chad has always been very vocal about certain things that have happened in his life and i don't want to talk about you know his testimony because that's for him to tell and you know i can't sit up here and say that you know he's a an addict or anything like that because i don't know that about him you know like I said, me and Chad have had our issues, but we never got that deep. Oh, and Chad, the night that you remember that night when Woody said that he um he accidentally removed you because he was trying to, he said he accident accidentally blocked you or something like that, and he was really just trying to remove you from the room that night when he kicked you out. That was on purpose, and I got the screenshot of that. He's a he's a he's a liar. He's a liar, a manipulator, a dangerous person. Very dangerous person. Shout out to Kayla. Oh, not 10 other listeners, not 10 other anonymous listeners. Uh-huh. <laughs> but y'all don't pay but y'all don't pay attention to us though y'all do not pay attention to us though <laughs> watch how quick this shit get back and i'm really being light i'm really being light because <laughs> it's more there's more but i'm easing this shit i'm gonna walk this shit out bitch i'm gonna walk you down I'm going to walk you down so bad to the point you're going to want to meet me and fight me. <laughs> McKee said, my timeline going cray-cray. Not sure what's going on. That's what I love. I stay in my little lane, although I do hope everything gets resolved, sending good vibes and love. At this point, it is no re resolution. I'm cool with just doing my thing. That's why I distanced myself and broke away. From that fucking succubus because I just don't want to be involved in that shit. I'll support my favorite artists on my own and, you know, with other people. But I don't need to be a part of any type of group thing. Because it's always, it's always some mess. And especially when you have vile people like him spearheading it. And look, he just blocked me. <laughs> I'm finna post this. I'm finna post a picture. <laughs> Cause I didn't block his taboo freak page. He done blocked me, y'all. I <laughs> watch this. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm finna post this. 
<laughs> but nothing I say is true. Nothing I say is true. Yes, Taj. Yes. Yes, he called. Yes, he did. He called her a monkey. Was that when he was watching her heavy while she minded her business? Yes. It, I think it was. I think it may have been the clubhouse thing may have been after the whole monkey comment. Confirming what I already knew constantly being stalked. Yep, I mean, it is what it is. <clears throat> Jackpot. Jackpot, you see how he blocked you quick? See, you see what I'm saying? If that was just a random page that, done, that nobody knew, why would that page actively be jumping in blocking people? He blocking everybody from that, that incest porn page because his ass is clocked. I don't got to lie about shit, my love. I ain't never came on here trying to act all grand and act like I'm better than somebody. I always just been cool, just regular me, whatever. I work like everybody else. I'm a working class citizen. You know, I don't be up here trying to call nobody broke and bumish and all this stuff. Because I don't know nobody living situation. I don't know nothing about y'all. Y'all the ones that want to act like elitists when y'all really just like everybody else in the world. And I'm not lying, y'all. He is blocking. He is blocking people from that taboo page because he don't want nobody to go. He don't want to know. No, he don't want nobody to know that he's into incest. I told you, little nigga. I t <laughs> look, he done blocked Chad. I'm putting it all in it. I put it all in the jumbotron, y'all. I'm putting it all in the jumbotron. I don't have to lie about shit. That nigga is a pedophile and he is into incest. <laughs> if you ain't got none of why, why why are you blocking people from that page remember I'm Missy Elliott remember you don't see me up here blocking nobody from my so called fake backup page if it ain't you Woodloaf McGrew Skid Row McGluten if it ain't you, why you blocking people? Ain't nobody came over there to um ain't nobody <laughs> ain't nobody came over there to tell you, you know what I'm saying, how much of a creepy ass, disgusting human being you are. You just blocking people from your porn page. Why you blocking people from their porn page, bitch? You don't want nobody to see the nasty shit you into. And he called Chad a ped pedophile. He called Chad a pedophile, but this is the stuff that he do. I told y'all, when I said he be letting a, uh, his 40-year-old ass be letting a blank, blank, a blank lay up in his bed while the mother is not home, and I'm not just talking about laying in the bed, like just laying in the bed while he's not in the room, laid up in the bed with the boy, cuddled all up, naked and shit, sending photos of this young man. Ain't no telling. And I'm not going to say the young man's name. y'all, If y'all ever been around him or in a inner space, you, you heard him talk about the young man. And I, I'm, I am going to remove this because I don't want the little boy to. Uh, 
I don't want the little boy. I'm sorry, I'm reading comments, y'all. I don't want that little boy to have to see this when he get older, but shit. You know, I have to tell y'all the truth, because this shit right here, this shit is not no motherfucker. Look. <laughs> look. Look. I I don't have to lie, y'all. Look, I'm finna, I'm about to, I'm about to post this to the screen. Hold up. Check, check the screen. Check the screen. Check the jumbo. Check the Jumbotron. That's him. See, you got to be careful how you play yourself because you retweeted the Chateau BG from your Taboo Freak page, you dumb shit. Exactly. Why would that page post about the Chateau and RT post, retweet posts from people talking about it? It's basically, it basically says it's him. Exactly, Alicia. Nobody got to lie on you. Nobody has to lie on you, sweetheart. Hold on. I'm oh, my God. My DMs are broken. Oh my god. This is a screen screen post about the shadows of him creature because of him. That's my info. You gotta use that. Can you at least please follow my stuff? I want anyone to know. Okay. All right, babes. I'm s I, I, I hear you. I just read you I just read that. Um hold on, let me I'ma re upload it and then I'll you know, block your name out. But yes, this is the type of stuff that he do. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful what you say to him. You got to be, that's all that trauma bonding you bitches be over there doing. And he up here calling y'all slow and talking about, Talking about y'all like a dog, and that ain't even all of the shit that he done said. But y'all so goddamn loyal to Mr. McGrew. You're so loyal. Madea's gonna Madea's gonna take you for a joyride. That bitch ain't got no love for nobody but himself. And he be trying to he be trying to play this caricature of a black a, a oversized heavy set black woman and bonding with black women while he disgraces black women. How the fuck you gonna call? How you gonna sit up here and lie and say you for black women? You not for black women. Don't advocate for black women. You are for yourself. You are for yourself. You don't care about nobody but yourself. And matter of fact, bitch, since you want to play, let's play hardball. I I'll fucking write your I'll write your employer and and send them the uh, screenshots of you admitting to attacking one of your clients at your former job. See, bitch, you don't want to play no games with me, bitches. I I I'm the, I you know me, so you know how you know how low I could go. So, bitch. Keep it cute. But you can't even do that because look how you look. And I'm going to get to the relatives in a minute. I'm going to get to the relatives in a minute. Hold on one second. Let me take this girl's stuff out of here. fuck is you talking about see that and y'all gotta be careful like when y'all dming him and stuff about stuff be careful be very very careful because he will share that shit he will fucking he will fucking disgrace you He be talking about a lot of people, just like he said up there and talked about bardiology to me. He told me that bardiology and I and rest, you know, 
I'm, I'm sending her healing and love or whatever, because um, I don't know what she's going through. I know she hasn't been on Twitter on her, you know, page for a while, but, you know, he was sharing with me how she was, she told him that she struggled with alcohol. You know, why? But you sit up here and talk to this girl on the phone. Like, why are you, why are you revealing this girl's personal information to me? Like, what was the point of that? Okay, yeah, me and her, me and her had a little back and forth over escape and the whole Latasha Scott situation, but it was never that deep where you needed to be sharing me, sharing with me her personal business and what she's struggling with behind the scenes. It ain't never that motherfucking deep. It's never that deep. But you sit up in group chats with Bardiology and pretend like you her friend, but you the one that sat up here and said that she was the one that told, um, that was giving, um, what's that boy named Brandon Cardi B updates or whatever his name, updates of Cardi B. She, he was telling me that she was the one giving him information and that's how the, how stuff was getting out about Cardi and certain things of that nature. And if y'all are in a group chat and other group chats with Woodloaf, y'all know what I'm talking about. Those of you who, especially if y'all OGBG, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. That nigga is a spawn. He's a fucking spawn. So I'm going to re-upload that message, love. I just want to make sure. Because I don't want you being involved. I don't, honestly, I don't think anybody, actually, I'm going to send it to your DM first and you tell me if this is good enough because I don't want you to be, if you don't want to be involved. Hold on one second. Tell me if this is good enough. See, I don't need a fucking army, bitch. I can, I can, I can get you myself. You see how, I, you see how I don't have a thousand co-hosts and stuff? I could, I could invite them up because I really, you know what I'm saying? I really could add some more people, but I don't want them up here right now because I want to get it all out. And then after I'm done, then everybody can whack your ass. But I need this. I need this for me. <laughs> Taj, listen. Listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> okay, okay. So you just gave me okay. All right. I will post it back. I just want to make sure it's okay. And I'm actually Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the tweet so that way, you know, that's what I'll do. I'll edit the tweet when I re-upload it. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to how, how he beats on his big old monkey chest. Climbs to the top of the building, beats on his big old monkey chest, and falls off. If you know what movie that's from. <laughs> Why don't you climb up to the top of the building, beat on your big old monkey chest, and jump off. This is how the chateau was created. Talking about I don't have no relationship with my mama just because I don't tell you every little inch and detail 
about me and my mom's relationship. Shit, I just talked to her three days ago. Running your motherfucking mouth. Bitch. You thought this was. And don't let me get to. You know what? Should I save? I'm going to save a little bit because I want you to I want you to do some more shit so that I can further lower the casket. Because I ain't going to go all the way. You see, you got to be smart in war. You got to got to be smart. I ain't going to go all the way. I'm going to tell just enough to get your motherfucking ass in your mode because I know you're going to say something. I know you're going to say something. You can't you can't avoid me, nigga. I'm on your ass. I'm on your ass because you got me fucked up. Trying to act like this is about some shit that it ain't about. I don't give a fuck about no fucking Twitter friends, bitch. I disbanded from you because you're a fake ass fraudulent bitch who talks shit behind my back amongst our fucking friends. That's why I detached from you. I should have detached from your ass when I seen you doing it to uh, our so-called friends. Maybe that was a character flaw on my part. I can own that shit. But that's why I detached myself from you. Because you was a nasty individual. You were always untrustworthy. And then you try to act like you friends with everybody. No, you fr you're not friends with everybody. You might have some people that you might have a slight, slight, a flick a fiction for but not really you don't you're not trustworthy you'll stab anybody in the back what's up messy booster i let you up because somebody told me to unblock you i think i don't know when i blocked you i don't know how so don't ask me because i don't really know and don't remember but i unblocked you i see you up here to speak so i'm gonna allow you to say what you need to say before i put continue to keep grilling this hamburger oh i really didn't mean to raise my hand no shade i think i clicked it by accident but you can okay. drive me back okay cool how do i okay i'm just gonna remove from speak i don't want to remove you from the room i just remove you from speakers <clears throat> but yeah Girl, let, let, let's let's talk about the things, okay? Let's talk about how you were on a fixed income since 2010. You want to talk about people's employment or whatever. I'd rather, first of all, I have, I have not been fired um, from my job. Like, there was one job in the past where some it was a discrimination situation and i was i was told one thing and i i kind of misled mr mcgruff because i knew what type of snake ass bitch he was so i didn't give him all the information but i'm a person who knows how to be self-sufficient i work for myself i've i've always been a hustler i ain't gonna sit up here and act like everything has been perfect but i've been a hustler but you can't talk about me when you sitting up here on a fixed income and you relying on other people for state benefits and before anybody say oh drew line drew line let me find that screenshot of him saying that he was on a fixed income Here it is, bitch. Let's let's wake this up. Let's 
see, I don't gotta use nobody else to spill. And you was, and that's how you were able to pay your rent because you were unemployed for some time after you got fired from that CNA job from abusing that client. You claimed that the client hit you first, but you swung back. That ain't what happened. Imagine you letting your disabled relative go to a, a home, a nursing home, y'all, and you have a nurse like this big ass beast who assaults your relative. Uh, assaults your relative and gets fired for assaulting the relative. Bitch, what you talking about? But everybody's so goddamn wealthy. Everybody's so rich and wealthy. One second. I want y'all to pay attention to these screenshots too. I don't have to lie. I have to lie on you, bitch. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Chad, stop. <laughs> Chad, stop. I am wilding out. Y'all got me tripping in these motherfucking comments. Like. <laughs> how he gonna block. How he gonna block Chad. From his taboo freak page. <laughs> Chad ain't even tweeted your taboo freak page. <laughs> You're done, bitch. You're done. <laughs> like, don't nobody got like you weird, bro. Shout out to call me. Shout out to Noel, man. Like, listen. The proof is out there. I don't have to make up shit. Like, I don't have to get up here on, on Twitter and try to put on a show and impress. I ain't never, like, got on here and tried to impress nobody. Like, I just do me. I tweet about what I tweet about. I, you know, go on by my business. You the one that's trying to put up this facade. Like, you so grand. But you want to talk about you want to talk about other people's situations and talk about people's dead relatives, talking about people's drug abuse, talking about people not being able to have children. What kind of, like, you are twisted. You are twisted. You are twisted. See, when I told you, when I told y'all hoes, when I told y'all hoes to stay out of me and Woody's business, I told y'all that for a reason. Because, see, y'all don't be knowing everything. Y'all so eager to tr to be uh, to be in the in the in the service and be a part of the melee. Y'all so eager 
to try to defend him. And the whole time you defending him, he was talking trash about you to me. Mr. I, I distanced myself because he couldn't take a joke over Monica. Meanwhile, he over here trashing you to me, talking about you a mean girl. Because you couldn't take a joke because Nia exposed you. And Nia, don't you get too motherfucking excited because I got your number two, bitch. He thinks you're slow as hell, too. See, this is why I called y'all rejects. I was once a reject, a part, I was once a part of the reject circle when I ain't know no better. Let me find this screenshot of him calling Nia slow. <laughs> guess we both ain't shit huh guess we both ain't shit that's the type of energy i'm on i don't give a fuck i don't owe you i don't know i don't owe nobody no motherfucking allegiance i don't owe you motherfuckers nothing when i distance myself from him i distance myself from him for my personal reasons none of y'all should have got involved y'all should have just minded y'all business but the, the reason why y'all really upset is because y'all saw me on a space with Chad and Trixie. So you thought I was betraying the family. Why does Trixie and Chad make y'all so mad? Like, so y'all don't know how to think for yourself? It's a group thought type group? Like, yeah, y'all y'all a cult. Let me upload this screenshot. See... You bitches is so fucking, <laughs> y'all are so fucking, y'all are so fucking stupid. Y'all are like sheep. Bam, there we go. Miss Nia, Miss, that's my brother. You country bunking, you bald-headed country bunking. He, he don't like you. He don't like none of y'all. He didn't like he didn't like me either. He never did. Yeah, it was bro and bro this and bro that and all this shit, but I had to realize that motherfucker didn't like me. He was the reason. It wasn't tame. He was the reason that I got doxxed. He the one that was in cahoots. Sending my information to people. Bitch. Now, how many more, how many more new Barty gang members are you going to deceive and lie to and, and play this Madea character, character of, of, a, of a black woman and, 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 and appease and try to swoon on people and try to lure people into your little wasp trap and get them comfortable so you can suck all the information you can while they pour their trauma out to you. You talked about how you pay for... Let me shut up. I'm going to say you that for the next space. Because I, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. I know it is. Bitch, I'm on your ass until your big bloated ass shit your whole fucking pamper. You are human Humpty Dumpty. You are a meat wad. Your BMI is above average. 
you are a pedophile. You did you do live on um a fixed income. You do live on housing. Housing assistance from the Dallas Tarrant County, wherever the fuck that county is in Dallas. You did fuck your cousin. That's why that, that subject was so sensitive to you. Because you fucked your cousin. You told me he fucked you. And you said he had good dick. That's what you told me. You said he had good dick. And he fucked you. And it was you said family dick is the best dick. Don't, you told me he fucked you. And you said he had good dick. That's what you told me. You said he had good dick. And he fucked you. And it was you said family dick is the best dick. Those are the two cousins you told me screwed you down, Mr. Wood Woodloaf McGrew. Now go run and tell your cousins and family members that I said this. Cause they know your T. They know that you they know. They know that they they know whether or not they fucked you or not. Let's talk about Mrs. Bridget, shall we? Because this is Bridget Williams. This young woman, this young black woman was somebody who lost her way. She she fell on hard times. The woman, as he told me, was educated. But she lost her way at some point. She, you know, she's a, you know, drug abuser or whatever. And I guess he and her had a budding, or I won't say budding, because he claimed that they had been friends for years. Years. And this woman trusted him with her children. Trusted him. Trusted him. This this man sat up here and purposely did not return to work. He could have went back to work a long time ago. He was not unable to work. He wasn't disabled. The only thing that he couldn't do was get around, like, as far as, like, he didn't have no car. He ain't had no car, but he, he was a willing, able, working body. He just refused not to work because he was so adjusted to living off a of fixed income he did not want to return to work and he let this woman come stay at his house and the whole thing was he was going to use her on his taxes so that he could you know what i'm saying have a you know some income coming in and, and maintain it you know the fixed income that he already got so he let this woman come stay with her, him. And when I tell y'all he stayed, that lady stayed with him for a good two years or so. Um, and I used to have these talks with him. Everybody in the little friendship circle used to have these talks with him about how he needs to like, if you feel like this woman is overwhelming and you're having to pay everything, you could barely pay your utilities, you could barely pay your rent and all this stuff. Because this woman is living with you and you talking about how this woman, um, her own son don't want to take care of her kids, her her daughter's kids. Because the, the, the woman that I'm speaking about, she's raising, she was raising her daughter's kids who is in jail for whatever it is. Um, and he basically, he basically told me all this one business. Now, mind you, I don't know this woman from Adam spilling all this woman's business in the streets to me. He and this woman get into a huge blow up. And he tells me that she was mad at him because she overheard him talking about her to me or whoever it was he was talking to on the phone to his friends. This woman is already feeling like crap. She's got a drug addiction. She can't take care of her, her grandchildren. She's trying to do the best that she can. And you're up here trashing her. Trashing her to complete strangers. Meanwhile, 
she don't even know you taking advantage of her. When she couldn't serve you no more and she couldn't bring you any income to your home, you kicked her out on and you kicked her out on her ass. You could have took her to a homeless woman's shelter or anything. You didn't do that. You talked about this woman for a good two years. Now, not only is her now, not only is the mother, the grandmother traumatized, the children probably are tra traumatized now because of detachment. They probably got used to you being a father figure. <clears throat> a quote unquote father figure, uncle, whatever gay uncle you were to them. And they were so used to seeing you and you kick her out and after you done used her all up now, used her all up. And you sitting up here talking about she, I'm having to pay for her, her pay for this and pay for that. You knew that situation before you moved it because you told me what type of person she was. You told me that she go from friend to friend house. She done burned all these bridges with people. She done did this and that. You knew what type of person she was before she moved into your house. And you let her stay in your house for that length of time because you were not working. You had stopped working and you were using this woman. But you love black women. Bitch, you don't love nobody but your motherfucking self. You're a trashy individual. And every last one of y'all that's sitting over there spilling y'all business to him, it's going to come back to bite you. It's going to come back to bite you. Just like you shared with me and I don't know how true this is, but you shared with me that Mrs. Milan, Mrs. Noah Milan has an, S, an incurable STI. You shared that with me. So Noah, handle that. That's your friend. I ain't got no reason to fucking lie. But you up here trying to you trying to spread his lies on his behalf, and he up here accusing you of having an STI, an incurable STI, allegedly. And I've never been a prostitute. Let me just stay, stay, say this, because that was something else that was put out there that I've been a prostitute and I sleep with Mexicans and all this stuff. I've never been a prostitute i've always been open about my sexuality in terms of like me being flirtatious y'all if y'all ever been in the space with me y'all know i'm a flirty person i love sex it's you know but i'm not a, if i was going to be a prostitute i would own that i'm not ashamed of my my sexual history but calling me a prostitute that's a that's a new low because i've never sold my body never now, have I thought about creating an OnlyFans? Yeah, that had crossed that crossed my mind before, but I've never, I've never prostituted. Now, have I been a slut? Possibly. <laughs> I've had my slutty moments, but I ain't never sold my body. And it ain't, it ain't got that ain't knocking nobody who's into sex work. Do what you gotta do. But the prostitute is the person that you're friends with that you told me had an incurable STI, Miss Noah. That's what you shared with me. That's who the prostitute is because that person shared with us how he didn't have sex with white men. Maybe you trying to tell, maybe you were projecting somebody else's story onto me. You told, you telling somebody else's story. You told me this man had an incurable STI Noah openly uh, it said to me and others in the clubhouse setting how he had sex with white men before for, for money. You know, in New York. That's your business. If you let in, and he and he said he was the top in the situation. He plowed them. I mean, that's your business. You do what you got to do to make your money. But don't put that story off on me. I done sucked a little dick, but I ain't never been no prostitute. I ain't gotta I ain't gotta be ashamed of nothing that I do. 
Stop putting these lies out there. Tell the truth. Tell the real story. Talk about how you shared with me that you let some redneck Texan man fuck you when you was a teenager, Mr. Woodrow. Talk about that. I've never shared skins with no white man. So stop these lies. Stop these lies. Bitch, you don't want addicted to your cousin's dick. Your cousin's dead dick. Now who gonna now who gonna pull you up out of this rabbit hole? Cause the proof is in the pudding. I ain't gotta I ain't gotta sit up here and say she said he said. Yeah, you did talk shit about Porkchop. Yeah, you talk shit about Nia. Yeah, you talk shit about Noah. And you talk shit about Mark too. Hold that thought. Because Mark, you was up here on the sidelines. You know, <laughs> y'all pay attention. Why is other people's spaces stand up? I ain't got nothing to do with that. Watch how you move. That's how I feel about it. I mean, shit, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Y'all got a lot of enemies. I mean, you literally held a space dragging people left and right. Y'all always doing that. So ain't no telling who did it. But that ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't care about, I, I didn't care enough to do that. But, that, you know, but I could understand why you do that because I am petty like that. I probably should have thought about doing that. I probably should have thought to report it. But I don't, I don't have any of y'all like y'all locked, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to see y'all spaces anyway. I didn't care enough, so you know. But Mark, you hold that thought. You hold that thought <laughs> because I got your number too. This is who y'all loyal to. Give me one second. Let me see if I can find that. Let's see if I can find that screenshot. You know what? No, mm, mm, let me see. I gotta, I'm trying to see. Uh, I think I'm going to say that. Now I'm going to say that one. I'm going to say that one. I'm going to say that one. Mark, everybody knows this is an ongoing rumor, and I don't know how true I really don't care how true it is or how false it is. You, you're, what you do behind closed doors is your business. But you do act like a... Um, you do act like a gay man. Um, a lot of your behavior tactics is very much um, of the gay culture. Um, and just because you have gay friends don't make you gay, but you know, there, there have been some rumors going around about you and your relationship with Noah and people talking about you and Noah, you know what I'm saying? Doing whatever y'all do, which is y'all's business. But, um, I would just say, be careful. Like I told y'all, be careful who you bond with. Be careful. And since we're talking about dead relatives, let's talk about your your dead relative, Quinta, or what is it, Quinta? What what's her name? Let me see. Let me look up her name here. Quota, quota peoples. Let's talk about how you use her name in vain to talk about sickle cell. You've never, you never discussed her prior to her death. Never talked about her. No matter how close you were, you never discussed her. It wasn't until after she passed that you started to talk about her as if she was your sister and how she was so close to you and how you were in a deep depression. Meanwhile, you're sitting up here going to hell every other week. Talking about other people's diseases when you're losing family members left and right to sickle cell disease. 
bitch, your Libra scale been tipped. Not because, not because of any astrological shit. Your, your Libra scale tipped because of all the lipid being my body mass that's weighing it down. Clean your colon, clean your soul, clean your heart, clean your arteries, clean your digestive system, clean your skin tissue, clean your diabetes, clean your, your heart compulsions, clean up your asthma. Like, if I lost a cousin to sickle cell, I would not be on here dragging people on spaces every other week. If I just lost my mother two months ago, I would not be on spaces or involved in somebody else's drama that has nothing to do with me. If I had just lost a relative, I would be sitting down minding my motherfucking business. I would be trying to heal and grieve in peace. I would not be attaching myself to anybody's conflict, especially when that said person hasn't done anything to me directly. See, y'all standing behind the big marshmallow and he's oozing all over y'all. He's oozing all over y'all. He ain't even loyal to y'all. But y'all sitting up here trying to have his back and defend him. And he talking shit about you. Fucking idiots. And now everybody gets to see what type of a fool all of you bitches are. And I ain't even sharing the rest of the shit that he, he told me about some of you stupid ass bitches. I'm only sharing some of it. Because I want him to come out that shell, stand up and face me. I want him to get on. I want him. To stop hiding behind other people. Stop going to the chateau and, and talking shit to other Barty gang to try to convince them to not fuck with other people within Barty gang. You're a, you're a disgrace. Not only to yourself, but to other people. And you're the ugly duckling in your family. And I'm going to post proof of that. Watch this. A bitch like that look like this could never, could never come for me. Bitch. Bitch. You could never come for me. Standing up like that. Look at them chins. And yes, I said chins. Look at them. Zoom in. Zoom in on the pick. Look at them dark ass circles around your eyes. You are a walking liver cancer patient. And it's crazy how obesity skipped. Well, I don't know. It didn't skip. It's, mm, it just impacted you the most. Let me just say that. Because Carolyn, she looking quite healthy right there. And your brother, he'll look, he'll, he'll look thickums too. So damn, clogged arteries is in the family bloodline, huh? Bitch. Not only sickle cell, but clogged arteries. Let's talk about all your dead relatives. Since you want to talk about somebody's dead relatives, bitch. Who this for? And if y'all want to find him on Facebook, his name is Woodrow McGrew. His mama's name is Carolyn McGrew. Do what y'all do. He's a certified nurse at the Disability Services of the Southwest in Dallas, Texas. 
DSSW, if y'all want to file a report to his employer, do so. Bitch, you want to play these games with me? You want to talk about my motherfucking family? Talking about my motherfucking dead relatives and shit, bitch? Let's do it. See, you can't touch me in real life. Because you don't know enough about me. Now. Now. Now, let's see you cry and beat your chest all night for the next few days. Because I know you coming and I'm ready for whatever you got to deliver. I want it. I'm begging for it. You picked the fight with the wrong bitch. You're not going to bully me. You play big Billy badass with everybody else. You, ain't, you can't bully me, baby. You can't bully me. You don't have the width, you don't have the wit, nor do you have, nor do you have the ammo to embarrass me. Now I'm gonna end this space and I'm gonna sit back and chill. But bitch, don't you ever in your motherfucking life think that you could ever, ever, ever do nothing with me. Ever. You are none of them bitches. There will never be a recovery. We ain't ever gonna ever, 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 never repair nothing. It's gonna always be up. If you want to handle it in real life, we can do that. But I guarantee you, I'm going to affect you way worse than you could ever affect me. Now, if you want to continue, there's more. There's more. Let the games begin.